Hey everyone, it's Adam and there are big, big changes ahead for Elementor in the way that you make websites. It's not something new, but it's new to Elementor and that is a class-based workflow. Right now we have version four of Elementor and this just came out so we can see what the future is going to be like. The main things that we're gonna see is there are seven new widgets which are gonna be the building blocks of building out your layouts. These aren't new, they're replacing the existing ones and they are able to have a class-based workflow. This is for styling these elements on your website in a consistent and maintainable way. It's a new way of doing things inside of Elementor. It's not new, but it's new inside of Elementor, and it's gonna be a bit more complicated initially if you haven't experienced this before. So let's set this all up together and take a quick first look. Now, the first thing that you're gonna need is a staging setup, a test site, because you don't wanna do this on a live site just yet, because this just came out and there's already some probably bugs, quirks, and problems. It's gonna be a while since this is what everyone's gonna be using. So uh, I'm gonna use ZipWP, there's no cost, but you can use, maybe your hosting gives you staging or you have a local development environment. You could also type in try.new, create a brand new site using ZipWP, there's no cost, but I have the Chrome extension for Zip and it adds this little button here to every plugin and every theme in the repo just for testing it. So I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna build out the, the test site for me and put Elementor in. But it does more than that, this Chrome extension. Also, if you're on Google and you're looking up a business, it adds a button that says create website using Zip WP, it takes down the images, the info of the business and builds an Elementor based website. Uh, it doesn't just do that there. It also does it here on LinkedIn. It also does it right here on Yelp. So imagine talking to someone and uh, that needs a website. You can make one within a minute just to show them in order to get the real job. So uh, here is the site that was just created. I'm gonna get out of the Elementor onboarding uh, since we're just using this for testing right here. Now that just is putting the Elementor version that's currently available, we need to go to the beta version and it's very simple. You go to Elementor, you scroll down to where it says tools. And then when we're here, we would go to version control. And then where it says beta tester, we're gonna change it from disable to enable. We're gonna click on save changes. You're gonna get this little modal right here. You don't have to sign up, just go ahead and click on the X but then I notice you have to click save changes one more time and now it's saved. So let's go over to updates. So I'm gonna to hover to dashboard and then updates and we're gonna see the beta version. There it is, the beta version. I'll check this box and I'll click on update plugins. And so now it's updating me to the version that we can take a look at Elementor 4 in. Okay, so now it's updated. I'll click on Elementor and I'm going to click on settings. And this is how you know you're on the right version. You'll see this right here. It says editor version four. So you have to click on that and then click on activate the new experience. Check this box is basically saying, hey, you're, you're not gonna, there's some changes here. You're not using this on a live site. Use at your own risk, but I'll click on activate. And now you can see on the bottom right, it says, welcome, you've got the newest version of the editor. Sorry if my video was covering that. So now when we go into a, let's create a new page, and then I'm going to just jump into Elementor. This is where I want to go. All these pop-ups. There we go. And so what we're going to see is these seven new widgets that we can use as well as the class-based system. And it's just a, a bit different on how you do things. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to skip this. And right here, you see it says Atomic Elements, and then it has the alpha badge, and you can click on that to understand what that means. Oops, and here we have them. Now, these are not new. They're different. They're the same. How do you even explain that? So basically, we have a container, a div block, a heading, image, paragraph, SVG, and button. Uh, so these are pretty much the core main building blocks of building your website. So I am just going to give you an example of the class-based system. So I'm gonna go and I'll just add a button like this. 
and we have our button and the option panel looks different. We now only have the general and the style tab and all your styling is gonna be done right here in the styling tab and it's totally different and looks totally different. So there's gonna be a learning curve that you need to go through if you're not familiar with a class-based workflow. And I'm not even gonna be here pretending to be the expert at this because I certainly am not, but I'm looking forward to learning all the ins and outs of it myself and having content here on the channel regarding this. So each of the elements, for example, this button will have a local style and this just follows the button. You can't take it from that that individual button and, and use it someplace else. So uh, if I go and I make some styling settings right here, it's just gonna apply to this button, but I can create a new class that I can apply to the styling to and then apply that class to other buttons and it will immediately get the styling wherever I've used it on my site. So the way you start this is right here, it says type class name, you'll click in here and you'll wanna come up with a class name. So what you're gonna to need to do is come up with a uh, uh, understanding of the best naming conventions for classes. But for this, I'm just gonna name it primary button. So I've entered BTN hyphen primary, and then it gives me an option to create this class. So I'm gonna click on it and now I've created this class. So I have two classes here though, and you can tell the one that I'm editing based upon it being illuminated in a color. So when I click on local, you can see I'm clicked on that and now it's pink. So anything I change only goes to the local class. But when I click on button primary here, everything I change is going to be applied to this class that I can apply to any button on my website. So let's do a very basic example. I'm just going to change the background color to something a bit lighter. Uh, there we go. Now, if I add another button to the layout, let's do that. I'm going to add this button right here and then I'm going to click on style and then I'm gonna click on class, I can give it that same class like this and it immediately inherits the styles and the styles are perfect harmony and sync across my website. So there's more things I can do obviously. Uh, now with all of these different style settings, there are some challenges though with the way this is currently implemented uh, because I don't know what, like I have no visual indicator of what styles have been added to this class. I know because I just did it that it's the background color, but I should have some kind of like a indicator here and I don't, unfortunately. So they'll probably improve that. Uh, now there are multiple states of, of an element and you can see that each of these classes here have these three little dots. And when you click on that, you can choose the different state. So a way to think of this is very simple with a button, right? You have the normal state, that's how it normally looks. And then you have a hover state and that's when you hover your mouse over the button. So if I click on this to edit the hover state, so this is how you're gonna edit the different states that follow the class. So here I'll change the background to something obviously a bit different. Uh, let's go with something like that. And you can see now when I hover over both of these buttons, it now has both. It has the normal state and the hover state applied to it. Now your elements can have multiple classes assigned to it. So I can go here and I can create an individualized class for something say like border radiuses and it would apply to multiple elements that I might want to add that to. Now there's also this icon right here, which is a class manager. And what this is gonna allow me to do is if I have multiple classes, I can order them based upon the priority for them. So when I click on this, it's probably gonna prompt me to save it. So I'm gonna click save and continue. And then it's going to let me know about the class manager. I'll click on got it. And so right now I only have the one class. If I add a second class I'll, and I've applied it, I'll see them listed here and I can choose the priority based upon the hierarchy. 
Now, even with these, there's three dots off to the right where I can rename or remove a class. And if I want to remove a class from the button, it's very simple. I can go here and just remove it. And now it's left with its local styles. So let's go ahead and put that back just like that. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So uh, it might... I might be making like a simplified version of, of, on this, but or an explanation. However, there's going to be a lot to learn, right? There's going to be uh, ways of naming your classes. There's going to be ways of having multiple classes for different styles, like the example I gave you with a border radius that you might want to apply to images and to buttons or something along those lines. So there's all these best practices that Elementor users are going to need to learn in order to get the most out of this. Now, what's not clear to me is, is every element going to be replaced with these elements that have to have this class-based system because this this is going to introduce some friction, right? Uh, if you've used Elementor a certain way for the last eight years, and now this is a new way of using Elementor, it's certainly going to be a learning curve. But I think it's great because if you switch over to this and building sites in a professional manner like this, you're going to level up your skills. You're going to make better websites for the projects you work on, whether it be for you or for clients. It is a better way of doing things. And it's kind of like a full circle moment uh, because this is this is just new to Elementor. It's not a new concept. Uh, and other builders have adopted this already. And there's other ones that are adopting it uh, right now. Another thing that's not clear is, are, is there going to be an upgrade path? I don't think there has to be an upgrade path. I think it'd be nice, but I don't think that it will probably be an easy thing having an upgrade path from a traditional Elementor site to switching to the class-based system. Although when they released Flexbox containers from when they only had set columns and sections, they did have a conversion upgrade path. So it'd be interesting to see uh, what do you think about this class-based workflow for building Elementor sites? I mean, you can't ignore Elementor uh, as much as people like to talk about a different builder here, a different builder there, maybe even the block editor, which a lot of people kind of despise anyway. Uh, pros do anyhow. You just can't deny that Elementor is the big dog. Uh, they, I think they make up over 10% of the internet right now or Elementor sites. I think that number's kind of low. And uh, most WordPress sites, they're still using Elementor. Elementor. So as much as uh, pros have moved on to some other tools in order to get this class-based workflow, Elementor still is the big dog. They're growing faster than anybody er, or faster than everybody else combined. You just can't ignore them. And so this is a pretty interesting. It's going to um, uh, be uh, interesting to see how they roll this out because I think the typical Elementor user, this presents a, a more technical knowledge that's required to build a website um, unless you just want to use local styles which is fine uh, as well I guess so what do you think about this new class-based system Elementor doing this is it too little too late uh, or is it just in the nick of time and pros are going to embrace it let me know in the comment section down below subscribe if you're not subscribed thanks for watching